Thank you for joining us for a new video series about water chestnut, also called European or Eurasian water chestnut. Water chestnut's scientific name is Trapanatans, and it is an aquatic invasive plant, meaning as an aquatic plant, it grows in the water, mostly lakes, but sometimes also slow moving portions of streams. Also, it is an invasive species, which has a specific meaning in ecology. To be labeled an invasive species, the species is A, not native to an area, B, is characterized by rapid growth and spread, and C, causes economic and ecological damages. Not all non-native species are invasive, and you may find yourself wondering what makes some non-native species invasive and others not. There are several characteristics that make certain species more a tendency to be invasive, and I'll go over some of the key ones and in particular how they relate to water chestnut and its invasive qualities. One of the first characteristics that is common amongst all invasive species is that there is a lack of natural predators, parasites, and pests that impact them. They came here from an area where they co-evolved with another group of species, and our native species don't know how to utilize these species as a food source. Um, we don't have any native pests that impact them. That is especially the case with water chestnut. None of our wildlife use it as a food source, and it has pests that impact it in its native range, but we don't have those same pests here. The second characteristic that's common amongst invasive species is rapid growth and sometimes the ability to change the environmental conditions to favor their own growth. With water chestnut especially, it grows at the water surface and blocks out a lot of sunlight, so it outcompetes our native plants for um, sunlight and space, space in particular. <laughs> okay, the third characteristic is the ability to thrive in high nutrient environments. Water chestnut is no exception as an invasive plant. It tends to favor very nutrient-rich water bodies. The fourth characteristic is abundant seed production and often multiple means of reproduction. Water chestnut, each rosette shape of this plant can produce 15 to 20 seed pods or nutlets um, in a season. In addition to the seed production, it also has the ability to reproduce from fragments. And the fifth characteristic is the ability to survive and reproduce under adverse conditions. Water chestnut has a specific adaptation that aids it in this process. Um, its seed pods are very spiny and hard after they mature, and they can re reside on the lake bottom and remain viable for up to 12 years. So this makes management of water chestnut once it invades a water body a very long-term commitment. Another facet of invasive species is that they cause environmental and economic damage. So now we'll move on to the impacts of water chestnut. Water chestnut, as I mentioned before, creates conditions that favor its own spread. And as it does so, it outcompetes native aquatic plants, which are integral components to our aquatic food webs. They provide food and shelter, especially for young of year fish, for example, in a system like a lake. Um, water chestnut, unfortunately, does not provide food to our native fauna and nor is it a great source of shelter. In addition, aquatic plants are also very good at limiting shoreline erosion, and unfortunately water chestnut does not provide that function either. In addition, water chestnut forms dense mats of vegetation on the water surface, which also have their own environmental impacts. Number one, these dense mats of vegetation limit the air exchange with the water and really can lower the dissolved oxygen levels in the surface water in the summertime. And then in addition to that, these dense amounts of vegetation eventually die back at the end of the year. And when they do that, so they settle to the lake bottom where they're then broken down by bacteria. As those bacteria do their job of breaking down this plant material into its integral components, they are using up a lot of oxygen in the lower lake levels. And that can create a stress to the fish in these systems by lowering the oxygen levels too much. In addition to ecological impacts, a lot of invasive species also have economic impacts. In the case of water chestnut, the dense mats of vegetation that it forms on a water body surface make paddling and boating extremely difficult. Um, I can speak from personal experience that it is extremely difficult to paddle through a dense stand of water chestnut. Um, this can reduce recreation value to a water body and reduce tourism as well as shoreline property values. Um, in addition to that, um, the, the spiny seed pods that the plant produces can be very harmful to swimmers and waders' feet. They can stick in and not release very easily and really be very painful. Some of these nutlets have also been known to puncture boat trailer tires. Um, and then finally, the 
actual direct costs of controlling these plants are also quite staggering. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife estimate that the U.S. spends about $120 billion annually on invasive species control, and water chestnut is just a small fraction of that. We hope that now that you've learned about the impacts of water chestnut that you'll help in controlling its spread in Bucks County. Uh, we need your help to hand pull these plants from local water bodies such as Lake Towie and Lake Nakamixon. Also July is Lakes Appreciation Month in Pennsylvania, so it's a great way to show your love for our local lakes by removing these invasive aquatic plants. In our next video, I will describe the native range as well as the history of spread of water chestnut in North America. And then we will outline some of the key identifying characteristics of this invasive species. I look forward to seeing you then.